sell your movie mm. right that's something we want to do but you know right now it's not even necessarily selling your movie because what we just said you're going to be responsible for it anyway and they're really more than likely depending on the level you're probably going to do more of a a license uh, where you're licensing it to varying things and you're doing split markets and you're the distributor managing it. Uh, there are a lot of ways to do this. Look at a festival or film market, you can sell it. Uh, or, by the way, a lot of the ways that I have been selling films for now, I guess over 20 years, uh, is by contacting people straight up, right? Send them an email, have a friend, contact them, send them a screener. Uh, it's simple sales. Uh, submit online. Uh, send them an email, the best way to identify the, and, and you gotta be like, uh, Bill, like the bill who wrote the alcohol anonymous, he was a salesman and he was also a market research guy. So he got on the road and he went out and he researched all these companies and then came back and gave reports to, for the stock market to be able to invest in them. In that same way, you, you need to identify the companies that are going to distribute your type of film. Not everybody distributes horror movies. Not everybody distributes documentaries and you may not want them. So, it, you know, just because it's a club doesn't mean I need want them and what they want me to join doesn't mean I want to join it as a member. Uh, there's right. no point in wasting their time and yours. Uh, you can get contact information from AFM, IMDB and websites like Dear Producer, which is one of my favorite. The other option, of course, is self-distribution. You can four wall in the theater uh, and then go through Film Hub or consider a smaller boutique distributors who are more likely to take, you know, just about, you know, if it's made of a certain quality, they'll take it like our friends over at Indie Rides. Uh, so bottom line, nobody really knows what is going to do well day to day because the audience tastes are changing moment to moment. You got to trust your gut and leave the results up to God or your higher power. Jason. Yeah. Pray, babe. Pray. Yeah, no. hey, pray. Pray, pray for me. You got to pray just to make it today. <laughs> Oh wow, man! Dated us on that one. <laughs> Got the MC Hammer going. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, where my where my pants here? Okay, anyway. Yeah, I think I think with uh, distribution, one general, and again, I have a whole playlist. I've done probably fifty videos on distribution. Check that out. But um, I think a good general rule of thumb, something to keep in mind, is to it's not a one size fits all solution like any of these places. Like it, you have to take distribution on a project to project basis. So like I get questions all the time on, you know, comments on this channel or on Facebook, like what's the best distributor? You know, I'm like, well, what's the movie, you know, because, <laughs> you know, depending on your movie and your specific movie, the best distributor for it might be this company that everybody says is horrible. You know, but they're really good with that particular type of movie. And you'll get filmmakers that maybe, you know, they went with a distributor that wasn't right for their particular movie. And then that filmmaker will just, you know, bad. Oh, that distributor is awful. They're awful. The distributor just couldn't do anything with that particular project. Just most distributors are specific in what they're looking for, what they take and what they can do well with. There are distributors out there that are kind of, you know, general. They, you know, they blast out libraries and, and and they can do okay you know but depending on your your project <laughs> well but, the marketplace is geared towards you know i mean the reason you know we have like something like amazon who's pulling back and pulling back and pulling back uh to the point where yes you can get things on amazon but they will be they will be through a distributor you right. know and and just like pretty much any other uh any other platform because that you know, or a platform worth using, like now World One TV, I see the other side of that. I understand why filmmakers don't necessarily want to put on it because there's so many of these and they're not necessarily paying. And the, But from my perspective, it's like, why does it hurt to have it on another platform? You know? Yeah, I you think know, so you got to I think you got to really research and kind of look at it. And you don't know where your stuff is going to resonate in a specific place where it's not necessarily resonating before, like, you know, with our partners that we've worked with at StreamGo, who's gotten us on more directly onto Roku and their own channels that they manage through through Roku, which are only on Roku, mm -hmm. um, like Streamster, or um, they have a specific Halloween one that they did, where, you know, we're seeing significant income that if we didn't split out that territory, some of these projects would be dying. Yeah. Um, so you're looking for... Uh, potential. You're looking for a distributor who has vision. You're looking for a distributor who is offering something 
and is continuing to grow or at least has a niche that they've identified that they can show you some numbers on. If they're not going to get, if they can't tell you what they've done with something, uh, you know, then you're more than likely you may, you know, going to be looking for somebody else or if you can't get in contact. I mean, certain simple things are just vetting, you know, the thing. Check out, call up three people who have films with them. At least. Uh, go, at least go through IMDb and go through them. Uh, when we had resources running a production company, we were, I was always, even when I really liked somebody, how many times did I go and check with two more companies? Yeah. Every always. time because it's due diligence. Yeah, uh, never, you know, never. It's like uh, they say, never take your first offer. Never, you know, or you might, you might eventually take that first offer, but mm -hmm. you're going to vet other, you're going to get other offers, not just you, take the first one as it comes in. Absolutely. You got to know what the market is going to absolutely bear for you and what your opportunities are, especially when you've put all of this time and steps into putting this project together. As we described, it's your baby. It's your project. It's something that a lot of people are invested in. How are you just going to now turn it over to somebody and not monitor it, not keep track of it, not know where it is? You know, there's a lot of things that come along with, you know, these making this is the beginning of the process on some level or the next part of the phase of the project where a lot of people, you know, kind of just want to step up and put hands out where we've learned, I think, through our experience that no, that's the point when you really need to put your hands on it. Uh, mm -hmm. That you're really the more the care that and the more that you understand it, the more that you're going to get more from it and right. maybe even get to your spot where bigger distributors are calling you, which we've gotten to that point where we're being called for specific types of projects because one, our information is in the right places like IMDb and, and those projects are being distributed. And the other part is, is when someone calls up and says, we make movie money with these and you make some of those we want that's always usually a good a good relationship start you're usually got a good chance because they're excited about making some money uh you know and you know the bottom line is is that yes we're doing this for different motivations and i think we all have to understand what those are and when you start you need to kind of make some plans for that what do i want from that uh how am i getting something for that and so we have something from the frugal filmmaker uh, I agree. There's a lot of distrust towards distributors, distributors, distributors. So many filmmakers have been burned. Yes, uh, they have. And, you know, when we look at that, we have to understand that we do have to recognize the fact that some where where the blame is, you know, it's like, OK, I got burned by a poor distributor or you know what? The project just really in the end, the market just didn't respond to the project. You know, sometimes we just make things that are not necessarily the things that people are going to jump on. And it happens to everybody. Uh, and we have a chance to buy a lot of numbers being out there and a lot of information to do research and give ourselves the best opportunity. You know, and, you know, if you're making things for certain reasons to create community or create certain things and you don't need to make a lot of money, that's even better because then you can really do it for the love of it. Uh, and you don't have to worry about that as much, but you still probably need to control your investment, you need to keep track of what you're doing with that. <laughs>